Welcome to this video about diseconomies of scale, written specifically for Edit Cell Economics Unit 3. So, this diagram here represents your long run average cost curve. And up to this line here, we are experiencing economies of scale, which you should have already watched and learnt about from the previous video. So, with economies of scale, as your output increases, your average cost, your cost per unit, is going down. You can see on the red line here, our costs are going down the entire time. On the left hand side, we're experiencing, we're experiencing economies of scale. However, firms can get too big and they can start to experience diseconomies of scale, where as your output increases, your average cost actually increases. And what we're going to be looking at in this video is four different examples of situations where firms can suffer from these diseconomies of scale. So, first of all, definition. Again, very important to have precise and accurate definition of diseconomies of scale, just like it is for economies. Very, very similar, except the key word is different. The diseconomies of scale occur where an increase in the scale of production leads to a higher average cost. Moving on to look at our four different examples. We've got morale, first of all. In terms of the industrial relations, in terms of the relationship between the, the managers of a company or the owners of a company and its workers, that relationship is usually much more complicated, much more prone to disputes and disagreements in larger companies than it is in a smaller company. It would be very rare to have a strike in a firm where only three or four employees existed, because obviously if you've got an issue, you've got a problem, you can go and talk to your manager, who's probably only on the other side of the room from you, you can easily have a chat with them and solve your problems. Whereas if it's a big firm with thousands of employees, then it's going to be much more difficult to negotiate that and have that agreement, and therefore there's much more likely to be um, potential strike action or other industrial action. Moving on, communication is also much more difficult, much more complicated in a larger company. If you've ever played Chinese Whispers, you'll know the more people you have in your chain when you're playing that game, the more likely it is that your message goes astray. Um, you think about an example of, say, Tesco's. If you wanted to get in touch with a senior manager in Tesco's and you're just a kind of a uh, shop assistant, that would be very, very difficult. There would be lots of layers of management to get through. Hard to, to phone up that person, get that person's phone number and so on. So there's much more chance of that communication getting misread, misinterpreted. In terms of coordination is our third example of diseconomy as a scale. So if you've got a very big, very complex task, like, as you can see in this picture here, manufacturing of cars, it only needs one small thing to go wrong in your production process and that will slow everything down. So for example, if in this factory you can see here they ran out of wing mirrors, the whole uh, production process would have to stop until they've got a new supply of those mirrors in because obviously it's a vital component for the car um, and they can't, they can't take the cars away from the factory if they haven't got any wing mirrors on them. So it's really important to be coordinated and organised in a larger firm, but in the larger firm there's more things that can go wrong, there's more things that need coordinating and so there's more likely that they're going to suffer from diseconomies of scale. And our final one is control. So again, when we think about Tesco's, got uh, thousands of employees all across the country, so it's impossible for those at the head office of Tesco to monitor and control exactly what the workers in every shop up and down the country or indeed around the world are actually doing, so they've got to trust their local Regional, represent, regional managers and their local store managers to, to be doing their jobs properly and to be monitoring their staff properly. But inevitably that might not be the case, but it's impossible for you as the senior management to monitor what everyone is getting up to. So much more opportunity for perhaps staff to be lazy, for people not to follow on the instructions you've given them, uh, and so on, and there's nothing really that you can do about it. So those are your four key diseconomies of scale morale, communication, coordination, and control. And if it helps to remember those in an exam, you can think about MCCC, and then try and remember what the M, the C, the C, and the C stand for. Now, those are all internal diseconomies of scale within a firm. Just like we looked at internal economies of scale, those are all specific within a firm. If a firm itself gets too big, it starts to suffer from these sorts of diseconomies of scale. But you can also sometimes get external diseconomies of scale where if you get too many firms in one industry all located in the same place, you can get some complications, some issues with that. So if we use our example, one of Europe's main ports, an awful lot of 
manufactured goods an awful lot of commodities come into the port of Barcelona um, and the volumes that they're getting are kind of growing all the time so if the port authorities did not invest in maybe new docks or new cranes or docks for larger boats improving the rail links, improving the road links to the port and so on then there's the potential for problems that might occur just pause the video for a sec here and have a think about what those problems might be before we move on to look at the answers. Okay, so in terms of answers here, the key point about external economies of scale, if you think about the port of Barcelona, without improvements to expand capacity, they're going to have problems with boats not being able to dock because there's not any spaces, they're going to have problems with being unable to unload uh, some of the containers off the ships or unload the grain or the uh, gas or whatever it might be from the ships if the facilities on land are not able to cope with the amount of stuff that's coming in. So you get pressure on your factors of production, they're not able to cope with your demand and you get pressure on the infrastructure in your local area. So you get more traffic jams, you get more problems on the railways, you haven't got enough train lines going out of the port and so on. And all those things, any issues with infrastructure to do with factors of production would increase increase the costs for firms and so again that would be an example of diseconomies of scale your costs going up as the output of that industry in that area increases. So remember it's important to understand that distinction between internal and external for diseconomies of scale just like it is with the economies of scale. And that concludes this video all about diseconomies of scale for Edexcel Economics Unit 3. If you've got any questions, please drop us a tweet at Dizzle Education. Thank you.